So welcome to my first ever podcast. Um, it's something that appears to be ever more prevalent now in the press. I think the US markets found that the podcast world is really starting to take off. So as always, trying to be ahead of the game slightly. Um, it seems that many people now are on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, which is great. And uh, I am too. Uh, we are too as a company. But uh, I thought it would be good experience to try and do a podcast get a few things online there's lots to talk about when you're a boat broker and thought I'd give it a go so in this first episode what I wanted to do is just really have a quick chat um, about what I do and and how I came to be in the boating industry whenever I sometimes chat to, to younger guys they say oh how did you get into boating and this that and the other and the truth is I didn't decide to be a boat broker it was something that I fell into really um, my Father's always had a keen interest in, in sun seekers and boats generally, which is great. I was very fortunate to have a number of boats as I was growing up, which is brilliant. So lots of great memories. And when I finished university at Exeter, I was asked by, at the time, dare I say, the local Fairline dealer, whether or not I would like to join them and start selling some boats, which I duly did. And I had a year there working with a good team, got lots of experience. Uh, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do long term. So with my father's help, we approached at the time uh, Sunseeker Sales Group and we said to them, there's no office for you guys down in the southwest. Would you consider it? They said yes. And we opened an office shortly after. And this is back in 2006. So when I think now we're in 2020, that was uh, a significantly long time ago, which is quite scary. During the first few years, I learned a lot at the time. My direct boss was a chap called Paul Grange, and he's still in the marine industry now, but out in Asia. Great guy, learned a lot from him. And what I soon realised was that when you're selling boats, the paperwork is a lot more involved than perhaps I think many people realise. And that's something that I'd like to touch upon in, in later episodes. But I, I think really it's quite important that anyone that's listening to this that's either thinking about buying a boat or selling a boat really does take into account the level of severity of paperwork, uh, something that we, we do, and it's a real key part of our business. So working with uh, Sunseeker Sales Group was a great experience. And my first boat I sold was a Portofino 400, which I'll never forget. It was a good experience that the boat at the time was based down at Kingswear in Dartmouth. Uh, it was owned charged by a chap called Peter Watling, who's still around now, still see him occasionally. And we sold it to a really nice Irish family um, from Dublin and lovely people. And they went on to buy a couple of other boats. The Portofino 400 was a great boat. Unfortunately, that boat was a little bit underpowered. It had the Volvo KD 42s, 230 horsepower. Uh, great combination, but it did lose a, a bit of performance with those engines. But nonetheless, it was a good experience and it got me onto the ladder with Sunseeker. And from then on, I really sort of started going through a number of boats Camargue 44s, Camargue 50s, Manhattan 50s, uh, Tomahawk 37s, Hawk 37s, lots of different boats. And uh, they went through, obviously made a few mistakes, but on the whole, I think we managed to, to stay unscathed. And uh, it was great. We had an office in Torquay on the Vaughan Parade. Uh, great, great office, really smart. And it was a great place to be able to welcome clients in. I was very fortunate that because I'd grown up effectively on Torquay Marina, I knew a lot of people down there and, and they knew me. So when they heard I was working in the marine industry, very thankfully and grateful that they gave me their boats quite often to sell, whether they were Sunseekers, Princess, Fairline, Sea Line, whatever they might be. And very quickly, we became the, the main boat broker in Torquay. Um, and that was a really nice position to be in. And we had some some really good listings and, and it built on from there and pride ourselves in having a good reputation and not upsetting anyone if I can help it. And I do believe in business that gets you in a good position going forward to to get repeat business and, and, and have a good reputation. And one thing, again, we'll come on to all these topics in, in later episodes. But one of the things with the marine industry is a very, very close knit community. People talk to people. And it's really important when you're setting out in the marine industry to bear that in mind, because as always, you know, you annoy somebody or upset somebody, perhaps not even intentionally, that they'll, they'll go on to 
speak to so and so and so and so and so and so and all of a sudden you've got a problem on your hands and it, it's hard to regain regain your steps so worked at Vaughan Parade for a number of years um my sister Charlotte she actually worked in the office with me for a while as well which is great looking back and perhaps at the time didn't maybe really appreciate that enough but she was really good at uh, what she did but unfortunately, her ambitions were slightly more than what we could give her in Torquay. So she left to go and work in the shipping industry up in Glasgow. And during that period, when Charlotte left, uh, an office came up in Torquay, which was actually at the time occupied by Princess Yachts or a, a division of their sales outlet in Torquay. Uh, their office came available and it was in such a prime position that we couldn't just say no. So. We served notice on our Vaughan Parade office and in 2010, we ventured towards Torquay Marina and uh, we developed the office and we sun seekerized it, as you say. And uh, and then before we knew it, we were sat there in that office. Great spot, really, really popular, really busy. And again, it was a great position already having an existing client base on the marina and then people popping in was a really good way to build the business more. Um, shortly after that, Jamie Coombs joined us uh, to help with our sales side of things. Jamie came from the marine industry. So like myself, knew lots of people in the marine industry, which is really helpful, and really good. It gave him a really strong client base straight away to get some deals done. And in the marine industry, one of the most important things is not selling, but it's actually listing boats for sale. Because if you don't have the listings, you're never going to sell anything. So any sales guys out there, anybody to look get into, looking to get into the brokerage market, what I would say is don't expect to come to the boat brokerage world and just sell straight away because that's not how it happens. What you need to do is come into the industry with expectations to build listings. Um, and that's hard work. Without uh, experience on the marina or contacts on the marina, that is really, really hard work. And I think probably that's where a lot of brokers fail from the outset. They just don't have the ability to get the listings. It is hard. And you do have to cold call, you do have to speak to people, you have to go and do good photos, you've got to do a bit extra. But as I said earlier on in this podcast, what that does is gives you a good reputation. And once you've got that reputation, you can then go on to build your business, build your client base. So-and-so speaks to so-and-so. And before you know it, you get yourself a 50, 60, 70 foot listing. And as much as the smaller boats are important, the bigger boats obviously can yield slightly higher revenues. Um, and that's really exciting. So in Torquay, we now specialize in used boat sales, both locally and further afield. We have our one marine business, which is a division of Sunseeker Torquay Limited, and that brand allows us to sell non-Sunseeker product more effectively. It also gives us the ability to sell sailing boats. Now, I will be the first to say that I'm no sailor. Jamie is and has lots of experience over the years boating all over uh, the world in a race series, which is valuable really um, I don't have that experience so any selling boats I don't try and pretend I know what I'm doing I give them all to Jamie and Torquay predominantly is a motorboat marina but there are still of course sailing boats here and we have sold a number of sailing boats in the last few years that said our day-to-day -day business and our backbone of what we do is most definitely motorboat sales now I would love to say that we sell 50, 60, 80 foot, 100 boats all day long, but reality is we don't and our business wouldn't survive on that model. So realistically, we have a, a broad selection of boats in Torquay and we will sell anything if we've got a good enough paper trail. Now, I'm hinting there back to what I said earlier on in this podcast, how important the paperwork is. Now, with Sunseeker London Group, one of our prerequisites for any boat we sell is paperwork. The paperwork's got to be good. Now, if somebody comes to us in our office and they have a 25, 30,000 pound boat, and of course, we'd like to help them sell it. But if they don't have that paperwork trail, it can be very hard. Now, we can look at it and we know certain people that can help us to generate the paperwork that we need. We've got some great contacts at HMRC that will help us with sorting out tax advice and, um, and and tax proof and, and validating that. But to be honest, we have to be a bit careful that uh, we don't take on too many listings where the paperwork, we're going to get bogged down with that sort of investigation and looking into who owned it and Googling people and writing to people, because as much as we can do that, it takes a lot of time and it's very hard to get that time back. And one thing I have learned over the years, and again, I'm thinking of lots of ideas for podcasts now, is perhaps why I need to expand upon that. And, and when you first become a boat broker, 
you perhaps can go off on a tangent too much and you need to be realistic as to what you're actually doing. You know, you're there to sell. And sometimes you do have to be a little bit cruel to be kind on the basis that you can't do everything. Um, at the end of the day, if you're not making money for your company or for yourself, you're not going to have a job. So it is a business environment and you have to be mindful of that. Um, but going back to what I was saying on the on the listing side of it, we'll list everything from probably pretty much 20, 25,000 pounds upwards. Already this year, we sold a boat that was 29,000. We just completed my boat that was 92,000. Uh, we just sold a little sailing boat, a little Cornish crabber, nice little boat, and that's 22,000, I think. I'll get shouted at, but maybe a bit more. But they've, built, they've got great, all of those boats have got great paperwork history, and, and that's really, really important. Of course, our business can't survive on, on selling smaller boats. Um, they're very important to us, but we do need those bigger boats. Now, last couple of weeks, we've transacted or contracted out on a San Remo 405 for a really nice chat. Um, who we've known now for a number of years who boats in North Wales. We have also got a new Santika in build. My colleague Jamie's got that deal done, which is going to be delivered later this year, 2020. And there'll be some exciting podcasts, I'm sure, coming up about that. Um, and that's really exciting. We've also got an Axopar sold, an Axopar 37, which is staying local. And that's going to Dartmouth. Again, really nice chap. Never had boat before uh, of all that size. He's really excited and uh, I always like dealing with people that are, are really excited about their product and, and are nice to deal with. And as you can imagine, in any in any business, you get to deal with all manner of different types of people. And uh, it, it's nice to deal with people that respect you for what you do. And I respect them for how successful they've been. And uh, I always try and remember that and the fact that anybody you're dealing with in, in the buying a boat, whether it's £20,000 or a million pounds or £10 million, they've been extremely fortunate and extremely successful. And they've been around, the, been around the block a couple of times, so they know what they're looking for. They know what they're, they're trying to do. And when I hear of people in the marine industry who are almost perhaps trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, I just think, what planet are you on, guys? You know, these guys are very, very successful businessmen. They know what they're doing. You know, don't, don't be daft. Um, so I do try and, and, and still that sort of in my mind. And, and I, I, I do like doing deals, whether it's, like I say, a £20,000 boat or, or a more expensive one. I do generally like to do the deals. But I'm rambling now, so I won't carry on too much. But... What I want to try and do in this podcast is just give you an insight, perhaps a little bit of history to what I've done with regards to boat sales, some of the boats I've sold, some of the boats I haven't sold and why I'd like to sell them. But I think that'd be quite interesting. And I'll try and give you as much information slash background information as I can. If I give you too much, please let me know. Drop me some comments. Give me some feedback. If I don't give you enough information, equally let me know. But I will generally try and make it interesting. Um, I get around a bit with regards to traveling. So, again, you might like to to, to hear that, to hear some, hear some podcasts regarding that. I do have a relatively successful Instagram page, which is at Suntika Tom. So please go over and check that out. We also manage the accounts for Suntika Talkie, Facebook, One Marine, uh, Facebook. We also really at the moment want to push our YouTube. I'm a bit annoyed, really. We, we started with our One Marine YouTube or One Brokerage YouTube back in 2011. So a long time ago, really, in relation to a lot of other people that are now out there. And we, we did really well with it. But a lot of these things, we, we came off the ball with it and didn't do it for whatever reason. But now's time to, to start again uh, and start publishing some new content. But please go and subscribe. It's really easy. Subscribing to YouTube is really straightforward. All you need is a Google account. Now, if you haven't already got a Gmail account, go and set one up. You can subscribe. You can then set the account up on your phone, on your smart TV. It is so, so easy. And I think going forward, people perhaps just need a little bit of advice and education on how to do that. Loads more podcast ideas there straight away. But we can help you do that. But please have a listen. Um, like I say, my name's Tom Wills. I work for Sunseeker in the UK. And I'd like to really give you my honest advice and thoughts on what I do for a living. And I hope you find it of interest. Um, any direct comments you want to leave me, please send to tom at sunseekertalkie.com. That's tom at sunseekertalkie.com. Or my mobile is 0044-7776-114422. And of course, WhatsApp or, as I said earlier on, Instagram at sunseekertalkie.com. Thanks for listening and there'll be more podcasts soon.